How's it going, rednecks? Today, we're not going to be working on anything of mine, but we are going to be working on something, and uh, it's for a YouTuber called Mark Freeman 408. And if you haven't seen his channel, I suggest you check it out because uh, it's right up my alley of crazy. And here, I'll show you a few clips. <laughs> Oh my God, it's on the run. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> it made it pretty far. It sure did. So let's see, she's there. The jump, way over there. This car is a little out of control. Oh my, here we go. Oh, we gotta get in front of that. Here comes the stop vehicle. Oh, what a, <laughs> what a show, nice. Oh my god! Well, what about that? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Some of them uh, runaway vehicles and some of the ones that were laying on the side kind of concerned me. So what I'm gonna be doing is this. That's right, a remote kill system for uh, them crazy runaways. So yeah, let's get to work. All right guys, before we get started, let's go over everything we're gonna need. We're gonna need a Dremel tool with bits soldering supplies such as your solder, flux, and heat shrink, a soldering iron, miscellaneous tools, safety glasses, some wire, a water and dust proof case, a cigarette lighter plug-in, male and female, plug-ins just in general, LED lighting, some sacrificial fuses, and your remote relay and most of the electronics and everything I bought off of Amazon which include the electrical wire, the box, LEDs, plugins, and the remote kill will all be listed in the description below. So what do you say we get started? Alright guys the first thing I want to do is take a set of fuses 
both big and small and I want to actually blow these so there is no longer a connection between the two terminals. And I'm going to accomplish that by using a set of jumper cables hooked straight up to a battery. Alright, with your uh, blown fuse, what we're going to do is we're going to take the Dremel and we're going to carve out a little bit of the plastic here so we can uh, solder this connector onto the uh, leads. And just like that, the fuses are now ready for us to solder the connector on. guys that worked out quite a bit better with the bigger soldering gun this one was not big enough and as you can see we got some pretty good penetration down into the uh, fuse so that should be pretty good it's definitely a lot more difficult than my uh, prototypes the wire I used was a lot smaller so yeah let's get on to uh, getting some heat shrink Alright guys, now I need to make a section of wire that will go from the controller to the fuses wherever they may be located and to do that I'm going to use some of this wire right here. I figured I might as well make it about the same length as the cigarette lighter wire so yeah let's get a length of that cut and then we'll get one of these ends soldered onto that. Now, we need to figure out how to get this into there. Well guys, we're going to be adding one more uh, tool to the mix. We need a hot glue gun. And the reason for that is I want to take the transmitter and actually hot glue it into the uh, box here. And then I'm going to run a zip tie through the holes we made around the transmitter. And the reason for hot glue is it's malleable. It should be able to take some of the shock out of the rollovers and hits that this box is going to be taking. So yeah, let's get all this in there. With that all securely in place, now I need to drill some holes for my uh, power and uh, for my fuse output. Well, we're getting pretty close. All that's left to do is I need to install these three LEDs. We're going to start with uh, drilling them into the lid. have this little strap now that's installed on the unit and that's going to be for securing it in the vehicle and I'm going to show you how and where we're going to do that. And I bet you're wondering where did I get this material from? Well, 
well, there we go with the strap done all of this pretty much secure the last thing i need to do is wire in the leds let's get to it well guys i'm happy to say we're finished and this is the uh final product All right, guys, now I'm going to show you how this thing works. And, uh, Mark, you might want to pay special attention because this is uh, your owner's manual and, I guess, guide to how this works. So, first things first, the strap. So, what you want to do is you want to take the strap and slide it through the seat belt. Then take the seat belt and latch it. And that will keep this thing hopefully safe in any rollover or collision that he's going to do and obviously you can either put it on the driver's side or passenger side the next thing you want to do is take the uh, cigarette lighter and pop that in and you'll know you have power when that lights up red as well as you will have a green light here all right the next thing you want to do is get in your owner's manual or go online and find the fuel pump fuse and plug this in so Let's do that. Now I already know where my fuel pump fuse is. It's right under here. And it's this 20 amp. Right there. Now what we want to do is close our cap. Is <laughs> take our uh, fuse insert and take and plug it in right like that. And then we're going to walk over. And I got lucky. We got a blue light, which means I have the fuse in the right location. Now I'm going to show you what's going to happen if I put it in the wrong location because every fuse has a feed wire and then the wire going to the item, which would be our fuel pump in this case. So we have a voltage and then two fuel pump. So let's go take a look at our lights now. It should be red. Yes, that means I have this wrong. All right, guys, with our green light lit up, indicating that we have power from our cigarette lighter, and our blue light lit up, indicating we have our fuse installed correctly, this thing's ready to work. And what we're gonna do is we take our uh, remote here, and you're gonna push on, and that's gonna turn on this red light now. With all three lit up, that means this vehicle should be able to run. So let's take our key, insert it into the ignition start it up now we take our uh, remote here and we're gonna push off and that red light should go out and the vehicle should shut off just like that there we go now we get to field test it and by field test I literally mean field test so with that being said I'm gonna get this installed and then uh, my loyal driver here, Tyler, the big old peon, is going to drive away. And when uh, he gets to the point where it will no longer kill it, I'm going to walk this thing all the way out there somewhere. We're going to see how far that thing will go. So let me get that thing set up, and then we'll uh, start driving. And there we go. Now we're ready to uh, do a test run. All right. All right, guys, Tyler is in the driver's seat. We are in communication with each other. I'm going to do a test right now, and I'm going to kill the vehicle. And there we go. That shut it off. Now what he's going to do is he's going to go about every maybe 50 feet, and I'm going to try and kill it until we can't kill it anymore. There you go. Start her back up. Onward. All right, here we go. Did that kill it? No. It didn't kill it. No, it did. Okay, I was gonna say that would be that would be pretty lousy. Alright, I'm gonna give you the green light again. Yep, good. Alright. Drive another probably 50 feet. Here. Did you try killing it right here again to make sure we're not getting it? Okay. Yeah, right away. Right away? Alright, I'm gonna start you back up. There you go. All right, here we go, hitting the kill. That do it? 
Negative. No. All right, I'm gonna try it again. No. Not killing it. Dang. All right. Open, open your mouth and put it up to your ear. Is that is that what we gotta do? I've heard putting them up to your head actually works. Let me try it. Nothing. Nothing. Well, that's pretty disappointing. All right, I guess. You got me. Did I? I held it up and it kept spamming it. So tell me when it turns on. on. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna try and kill it with just one click. There we go. Did the light, the light didn't turn off? All right, tell me when it shuts off. All right. I don't think we're gonna be able to go that far. So take back up a little bit. I think you need a bigger antenna. <laughs> I think that if I can even shut it off that far away, it's still pretty impressive. Did it die yet? I didn't die. It I did? The the oh, okay. All right. Is it green or is it red? Yeah. Off? Yeah. On? No. On? No. On? No. Tell me when it comes on. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right, we'll measure from here. I, I'd say that's fairly safe. I mean, that's the absolute maximum I would want to uh, go. So I'm going to start walking towards you. Well, there we go, guys. It took a little bit, but I think this is a fair distance. And now we are going to take the uh, measure, walking measuring uh, wheel. We're going to walk it down there and see how far away he actually is. Two hundred and sixty seven feet. Now, I tell you what, that's a pretty good distance. And I know that thing would go further if it didn't have to be tucked down there in the passenger seat, but I figured that's the safest place for something that's being launched through the air, rolled over, airbags going off, dirt flying everywhere, rocks flying everywhere, parts flying everywhere. Yeah, I think it'll be good and hopefully it'll last quite a few. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and get back to work. Well, I did manage to stop him, but that thing coasted quite a ways. <laughs>